You know, a paddle gauge is a really useful tool to have in a shop where you're not using a table saw to rip wide boards and panels to width. It's kind of like a marking gauge on steroids. Whenever boards are too wide to mark with a standard gauge, that's where the panel gauge really shines. Now I cobbled this one together a long time ago and it's really, after years of use, it's really starting to show its age. The wedge and fence are starting to get worn and the gauge just really doesn't lock down like it used to. It doesn't lock down solidly and securely anymore. So I really think it's time that I built a new one and that's what I'm gonna do today. And if you'd like to build one yourself, be sure to check out the August 2018 issue of Popular Woodworking Magazine where you'll find all the details. I started by preparing the stock. This gauge has only two wooden parts, the fence and the beam. I'm making them both from hard maple for maximum durability. After cross-cutting and ripping the two parts out of a larger board, I used a hand plane to make them flat and square on all six sides. With the stock prepared, I marked a location for the first two holes in the fence and then took the fence to the drill press to bore them. The first hole is the start of the mortise for the beam. The second hole is for a brass nut for the thumb screw that will be used to lock the fence in place. With the two holes bored, I laid out the diamond shaped mortise for the beam by drawing 45 degree lines tangent to the bored hole. Then I chiseled the sides of the mortise following my layout lines. I worked halfway in from each face of the fence and met my chisel cuts in the center of the mortise to ensure that the mortise was chopped straight. After chopping the diamond shaped mortise, I laid out a shallow square mortise on each face that intersected the top corner of the diamond. These mortises will house a small brass foot that will apply pressure to the beam to lock it in place. If you don't understand just yet, it'll become clear later. With a quarter inch chisel, I chopped out the shallow mortise for the brass foot on each face of the fence. This left a small section of wood with the V-shape left from the diamond shaped mortise connecting the two smaller mortises. So I chopped that section between the two mortises out just to the point of the V. Here's what the resulting mortise looked like. With the beam and pressure foot mortises finished, I made the brass nut for the thumb screw. I inserted the round brass stock into its mortise in the fence and drilled through the fence and the brass at the same time. I bored straight through the brass and into the beam mortise below. Then I removed the brass stock and tapped it for the thumb screw threads. After tapping the threads, I marked and cut the brass rod just oversized so it would protrude slightly on each side of the fence. I enlarged the hole in the fence to create clearance for the thumb screw and then lightly ease the corners of the hole using a countersink bit and a brace. I then created a rabbit in the fence by first sawing out the majority of the waste, then cleaning up to the marking gauge lines with a shoulder plate. I prepared some thin, flat brass wear strips by lightly sanding off the oxidation and then cleaning them with acetone. Once cleaned, I mixed up some 30-minute epoxy, applied it to the fence, set the wear strips in place, and then clamped them to cure overnight. I also epoxied the brass thumb screw nut in position. While the epoxy was curing, I made the brass foot. This was nothing more than a bit of hacksaw and file work to create a small U-shaped piece of brass to fit the mortise in the fence. After the epoxy cured, I filed the brass flush with the wooden fence. To file the brass foot flushed, I wedged it in place with a small square of softwood. After filing all the brass flush, I shaped the fence to its final profile. To do this, I used a sash saw to remove most of the waste, followed by a coping saw, and then files and scrapers to finish the shaping and smoothing of the fence. The beam needs to be shaped like a pentagon in cross section. The bottom and side corners are just eased slightly, but the top corner is planed to a flat that is about a quarter of an inch wide. 
This is accomplished by cradling the bean in a couple of blocks with V-shaped notches sawn into them. Once the beam fits the mortise in the fence, use one of the cradles to hold the beam on edge for boring a hole to hold the pencil. Saw down the beam through the hole and about three quarters of an inch past it to create a curve to squeeze the pencil in place. Create a countersink in the side to recess a wood screw. Then drill a pilot hole for the wood screw followed by a clearance hole through one half of the beam. On the other end of the beam, saw two kerfs about 3 16 of an inch deep. Pair out the waist between the kerfs to create a notch for a small strip of brass. Drill a pilot hole in the brass strip and then tap it for a machine screw. Saw the brass slightly oversized. Then place it back into the notch in the end of the beam and mark the location of the hole. Remove the brass and drill a clearance hole in the beam for the machine screw and then epoxy the brass in place. To make the blade, cut a piece of steel from an old handsaw or card scraper. File the cut edge smooth and then grind a curved bevel on one end. Drill a series of holes down the center of the blade and connect the holes to create a slot using a chainsaw file. After making the slot, use an auger bit file to clean up the sides of the slot. And if you don't have a rotary tool, you can cut the steel with a hacksaw by clamping it between two scraps of wood and cutting through the wood and the steel at the same time. Polish the faces on a honing stone and hone the bevel as best you can, but don't stress about it too much. When the epoxy cures, file the brass flush to the beam, then apply your finish of choice. Finally, assemble your new gauge, first by putting the brass foot into the mortise, then slide the beam into the mortise to capture the brass foot. Tighten the screw down. Install the knife in one end by attaching it to the piece of brass with a machine screw. The other end gets a pencil and a wood screw to hold things tight. Congratulations, you just made yourself a tool that is sure to last at least the rest of your life.